All right, I thought I'd share a uh, quick little experiment that I was doing here. So uh, yesterday I had performed an experiment using a uh, Tesla magnifying transmitter and an extra coil as uh, two potential systems to transmit telurically to see if we could get high performance uh, communications through the ground using the Tesla longitudinal mode. Uh, that didn't work which uh, we were sort of expecting because transverse versus longitudinal waves. But as a follow-up experiment, I wanted to uh, do a couple little brief tests. Uh, since I had both of the coils tuned to the same frequency, uh, they are 160 meters, 1860 kilocycle. So the uh, two coil setups that I have here, this is a simple extra coil with a vertical mast that's used for tuning. Uh, it's running through a generic ham radio ballon for uh, isolation. Uh, one lead of the ballon is going to the extra coil. The other lead of the ballon is going all the way to ground. So what normally happens is if uh, we fire this up, I have the uh, transmitter set up and tuned here. So if I turn on the transmit and I turn up the power, the bulb is in line with the ground lead. So we notice, uh, I think it's a 15 watt bulb. So the bulb lights up because there's power going back and forth through the earth and it's dissipating some of that. Turn the power up and down, yeah. So that's relatively stable. So now, I wanted to see the difference is what would happen if I transmitted the same amount of power to the TMT and attempted to use that as a receiver. So this would this entire setup is basically an analog of a full-on uh, telluric transmission system. So if I take the lead that was going to ground and I instead splice it to a thin gauge wire, I think that's 28 gauge. Uh, you may not even be able to see it. So I have a 28 gauge wire that's running across to the other table to the lower end of the secondary of a Tesla magnifying transmitter. And what is set up is the primary circuit is running through a uh, variable capacitor and it's also running in parallel with a, uh, another test bulb which uh, it's either 15 or 25 watts. So what's the equivalent circuit here is that the bulb on the right, we'll say the, the transmitter on the right is going in series. It's going to the ballon. The ballon's going to the bulb. The bulb's going through the thin wire. Thin wire is going to the other TMT and through transformer action is going to the bulb, to the other bulb. So conventional prediction would be that because these bulbs are effectively in series we should see both of them light up when we apply power. So now if I turn up the power here we notice only one bulb lights up the bulb on the receiving side. Even though the bulb on the right is directly in series with this circuit uh, it's not lighting up at all. Uh, it turns out if I do put up the power, there is some uh, current running through that because if I put a 200 watt bulb on the left, actually, I got time for that. So if I kill the power and replace this uh, 15 or 25 watt bulb with something more substantial, this is the exact same setup with a 200 watt bulb side. So I turn up the power and at this case you do actually see both of the bulbs illuminating. So the only thing we've done was change the load or change the impedance on the circuit. And then if I use a fluorescent tube, uh, bringing the tube near either of the coils will detune it partially. So you can notice that if I bring it near here, the extra coil, it detunes both of them. The power automatically uh, drops to protect the transmitter. 
And then if I bring it near the extra of the receiving side, we see that the bulb on the right becomes dimmer, but the bulb on the left uh, stays more or less the same. It doesn't decrease with the same rate. So I found that interesting. But anyway, that's the quick test. I hope I uh, found this interesting.